Welcome to this presentation on the Revit 2016 API news. Before we would get going with the API details, let's take a look at where we are with Revit as a product today. The most important thing to note is that Revit is being used for absolutely gigantic projects with multidisciplinary teams distributed across the entire planet. We see Revit being used for steel detailing, including all the nuts and bolts. Here is an arena in Leeds, a multidisciplinary project with architecture, MEP, structural engineering and structural analysis integrated. In the area of MEP and HVAC, we are moving into a fabrication level of detailing. So how are we going to handle these projects growing bigger and bigger with teams growing bigger and more distributed, integrating more domains into a single project? With that said, let's take a look at the new major release, Revit 2016, and look at how to keep going as a great product and achieve the goals of expanding into new levels of detail and complexity at the same time. In previous discussions of the Revit API news, we separated the topics into rice and wine, rice affecting existing applications and the wine covering all the new functionality. In this case, we have one single slide about changes affecting existing applications, which is this one. It deals with the topics of linked files and loading of families, obviously both very important areas for handling large projects. So in Revit 2016, the reference intersector provides a flag used to switch on searches for elements in Revit links. There's also a change to the compound structure set layers method, which automatically unsets the structural material layer index. And finally, the new family instance will throw an exception if a family symbol is placed that has not yet been activated. You can check this by testing the is active predicate or activate a symbol before placing it by calling the activate method. As always, the methods that were marked deprecated in the Revit 2015 API have been removed in 2016. All the following slides are targeted at new functionality. Obviously, some of that will also affect existing applications, but this is the one and only RICE slide. The rest of the topics and the new functionality are arranged around the following four main areas of investment. Scalability on how to handle larger amounts of data in ever bigger, more complex projects. How to collaborate with the ever bigger teams in more distributed locations, working on domains and integrating all of that into one single project. The modeling of elements, how to access more detailed geometry, more element data, everyday interaction with geometry, shapes and elements. And finally, the everyday efficiency for the end user in working with the Revit user interface. The area of scalability does not have any visible changes in the Revit API, but the performance improvements will be very clearly noticeable to any user. The most important aspect working with the scalability and performance is that if we take a stupid system and just make it bigger, that won't make it any better. For example, the biggest traffic jam in the history of mankind happened a year or two ago in China with gridlocks of up to 100 kilometers and people stuck in there for over 10 days. So one important attempt, 
one important aspect in solving this kind of problem and the strategy that we're following inside of Revit is to strictly decouple the size of the problem from the performance in solving it. Some of the customer experience goals in this area, what people expect is not to be forced to split the model for performance reasons. So model splitting should only happen for business purposes. We want to integrate multiple disciplines into single models, be able to handle unified MEP systems, represent complex as-built buildings, and easily derive the required documentation for fabrication and construction and detailing in the field from the building information model. Some of the projects that we have undertaken to address these areas is progressive display, symbol sharing for MEP system families and reinforcement, graphics instancing, a parallel computation framework currently being used for color fills and later for other areas as well, improved performance handling linked models and a camera-based GREP generation. Here's a video or rather two videos side by side showing the relative performance of Revit 2050 versus Revit 2016. In both cases, the system is driven by a journal file, stepping through the same actions. And as you can see in past releases, some of the user activity was blocked by the system until the previous action or regeneration completed. Whereas in Revit 2016, the user can interrupt an ongoing regeneration cycle and continue working immediately. Another area is the parallel derived data update. We want to be able to make use of secondary CPUs of multi-threading. The objective here is to return control to the user immediately while derivative data is being calculated in the background so the user can interact with the model before certain calculations complete. And this system is implemented as a framework currently used for color fills, but the plan is to use it for future asynchronous services. A progressive display framework similarly allows interaction with the model during the view update. Uh, this is similar to the Navisworks concept updating geometry allowing user interruption during the navigation and the benefit is that we have fewer pauses during the model navigation. For handling graphics in large models Navisworks is often used as a benchmark among the Autodesk products so here is a video demonstrating user interaction with a large model in Revit and in Navisworks side by side. And as you can see, the performance is comparable. In some instances, Revit is faster. In some instances, Navisworks. But all in all, we can say that the two systems are definitely comparable. And that is a very good result that we are happy with. <coughs> The next area that we look at is collaboration. As said, we have growing projects with larger teams working with multiple disciplines in distributed locations and from different companies, all collaborating very closely together, for instance, through the A360 tool suite. Let's look at the history of collaboration from the Revit point of view. We initially saw projects being handled by teams in single locations, working behind a firewall and using file work sharing. As the projects grew, this expanded into entire enterprises with teams working in multiple locations, but initially still behind a firewall, making use of Revit Server and Vault 
to handle the file sharing issues. Now we see the projects growing larger still, involving multiple companies in multiple locations and there is no longer a possibility to hide behind a firewall, so we make use of managed access to interact with the data and a suitable tool for that kind of collaboration are the web services provided by A360. We have also been running a beta program with a version of Revit called Skyscraper, which lives entirely in the cloud and uses A360 as the one and only storage media. So that provides built-in collaboration right from the onset and immediate communication and collaboration with all team members and access to the model data through these web services on the cloud. So what we're looking at is providing a sort of operating system collaboration experience within Revit for multi-firm collaboration, unifying the experience with the work sharing and Revit server, providing total access to all the associated model services completely integrated with A360. Currently, the Revit API does not provide any specific API access to this functionality. We can make use of the existing A360 uh, and rather BIM 360 glue for collaboration and BIM 360 field APIs for providing access to the BIM data on the construction site. The next area that we look at is modeling providing more access to the Revit elements, their data, the creation of elements and geometry API. The Direct Shape API was introduced in Revit 2015. One strong reason for introducing this was to enable better interaction with IFC files and provide the ability to define elements and geometry directly within the project file without having to create a dedicated family definition for each geometric instance. This direct shape functionality has been enhanced significantly in Revit 2016, providing support for referencing, room bounding and curves and points. So, now the direct shape elements support element references enabling us to align and dimension these objects also enabling the direct shape elements to host face-based family instances there's a new property the direct shape options referencing option to control this behavior Direct shape elements can participate in room boundary calculations with another property controlling that. And finally, the original direct shapes supported faces and thus uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional geometry. We can now also include one-dimensional and zero-dimensional curves and points into direct shapes using the new wire frame builder class. Other enhancements to the geometry API include creation of solids through the solid utils clone and create transform methods, creation of curve loops using transform and create via transform, new boolean operations on solids to cut with a half space, the possibility to control the graphics style of curve elements, and a new loft geometry creation method on the geometry creation utilities, which creates either a solid or open shell geometry lofting between curve loops. All of these enhancements in direct shapes and geometry directly affect and enhance the interaction with IFC files. So now we can use IFC models and linked IFC models as references for dimensions, alignment, snapping and hosting of face-based families. Let's look at a demonstration of this functionality directly in Revit 2016. So I'll switch to Windows 
and to a beta version of Revit 2016 running here. I'm in a project for building a loft element and I have a macro defined in this project called add road loft with sections. I'll run this macro and it generates a direct shape for me which looks like this. The category applied to this direct shape is a road and on this this road consists of um, faces but also includes line elements. These line elements are called stations. They have a subcategory of station. You can see that they have a different graphic style and therefore appear red. They also have a different subcategory. One of the enhancements to the direct shape elements is the possibility to apply subcategories to individual parts of the direct shape. Switching back to the presentation again. Another very interesting area affecting modeling is the Dynamo environment. This is a separate open source project interacting with Revit through the standard Revit API but providing significant additional functionality as well. Especially Dynamo integrates the Autodesk design script constraint management and geometric programming language which can be used to very efficiently and simply generate complex geometry. Dynamo is a visual programming environment so this is suitable for people such as architects who may not want to deal with the nitty-gritty details of C-sharp syntax and uh, loading add-ins or handling macros. Instead you can connect boxes of functionality with their inputs and outputs and twiddle knobs to drive that behavior. This was one very exciting topic at Autodesk University and we see extreme amount of interest in this area. So if you're not aware of Dynamo yet, you definitely should take a look at it. As said, completely open source with a large active community on the internet. Another piece of functionality that was introduced in Revit 2015 was the custom exporter. Initially, this exported faces. So all of the objects visible in the Revit render command that was very important for exporting geometry to visualization and analysis programs and making it much, much simpler to uh, export an accurate representation of the entire visible Revit geometry without having to traverse the database element by element and dive into each element, traverse its geometry, handle all of the transformations individually. Instead, it enabled an add-in to hook in directly into the Revit rendering graphics pipeline and be notified of each face as it was streamed out through the rendering context. So this functionality is obviously also available in 2016, but we also add a new export context, the iModel export context, which processes the elements visible in 3D views. And this includes support for curves, polylines, points and text, as well as the faces and their textures. Another important modeling area is the new MEP fabrication detailing functionality. So the Revit and the Revit API now support part-by-part -part placement of segments, fittings and hangers, enabling a higher level of development with detailed connectors, specification-driven lengths, meaning a single length of duct can be separated into individual parts as needed and required for fabrication specifications 
couplings can be automated, libraries with grouping are defined, and there's validation of size, shape, direction, orientation, and connectivity. And this comes with a user interface which enables direct interaction with this content with realistic behavior. So detail and all the required data to aid coordination modeling is supported and included. Here's a video demonstrating that kind of interaction. So on the right we see the MEP fabrication library with a collection of parts that can be used. On the left hand side we see the normal Revit element properties and on the graphics in the graphics screen you can see how the user can interact with the elements switch back and forth between the library, the properties, detailed internal geometry, dimensioning, and control the direction and connectivity of these elements. The MEP fabrication detailing comes with a complete API, so this user interaction can also be driven programmatically. New classes are provided, a fabrication service, which includes support for fabrication service buttons, defining service behavior for given conditions, the fabrication part types, representing the types, for service buttons and conditions and fabrication parts representing the components manipulated by this. Let's look at a quick demonstration of this functionality. So I'll switch back to Revit and load a different project for that. So I have a API duct and hanger model I'll enable the macros in this document and we see here a shape that we use to control the placement of hangers. So I'll, looking at this collection of macros, I have a macro to create an individual duct T, a macro to list rods and hangers and there's a creation method that I'll run, which reads the shape of this geometrical element and creates a large number of MEP instances. And you can see here each one of these is either a hanger or a duct element or a T element. So if I zoom in to this region, you can see a large number of parts have been generated some of these are generic straight ducts, some of these are T elements, and all of them are attached to the framework shape by the hangers. Switching back to the presentation again, we also have enhanced structural detailing properties for reinforcement and uh, structural engineering. So new shape types for cold formed steel and concrete, improved integration with simulation, code checking and detailing products within the BIM workflow. Enhancements have also been made to the structural analytical model. So the stick and surface models now define local coordinate systems, which can be retrieved using the get local coordinate system method. New classes have been introduced to handle internal member forces. These apply to stick model elements to define and retrieve the member forces and their positions, forces and moments. Structural loads have been renovated, specifically the load and load combination classes. There's now a new base class for the point, line and area loads. The subclasses have been enhanced and the load combination, case, nature and usage classes also. 
The structural path reinforcement class has new methods and properties. So a complete renovation of this API. And finally, a new API-only capability has been added to support bent fabric sheets. We have a quick demonstration of that as well. I'll switch back to Revit and open a project to create a bent fabric sheet. This project also includes a macro. It defines one single element, a floor, and if I run the macro in Create Bent Fabric Sheet, you can see that a bent fabric sheet with an element ID was created and it's inserted inside the floor. If I zoom in on it a bit, you can see, get a more detailed impression of what it looks like. Finally, we have the area of efficiency. So how does the user interact with Revit? An important collection of enhancements was provided in the subscription release Revit 2015 R2. So this included platform and architectural enhancements, plus MEP and structural functionality. This was already made available towards the end of 2014. It also included one API enhancement, namely a read-write workset API. So we now have methods to create a workset and to control name of worksets and the active workset ID. So finally, the Workset API is more than just read-only. We have complete read-write functionality. There's also a new functionality to reveal the constraints. Some enhancements in the Schedule API to control the title and header displays. A new Datum plane base class for levels, grids and reference planes, which provides additional functionality. The text note API has been renovated. This is another example of more direct API access to the built-in Revit elements through an automated API generation system. So whenever we see a static create method on a class instead of the new text note creation method on the creation document, that is an indication that this API has been completely renovated and in that case also normally provides better integration and more API access. The dimension and leader API has been enhanced. So we have some new properties on the dimension, dimension segment and leader classes. Let's look at a quick demo of one piece of enhanced functionality that this provides. We have here a simple dimension and in this case the sample application is provided as an add-in with an external application interface. So I have two commands. One to align the dimension text with the um, one of the dimension points and the second one to freely move the dimension text to any position of my choice. Switching back again to the presentation, some enhancements have been added to the PDF export functionality. So now the table of contents includes links, views and sheets are also linked and hyperlinks can be included in the PDF export. We make use of this new PDF export functionality in the collaboration and interaction with BIM 360 Glue and BIM 360 Field. Another efficiency and collaboration piece of functionality is the export of CAD files to other platforms. Uh, other file formats such as DWGDXF or DGN where another CAD system might want to post-process the export generated by Revit. In that case, it can be important to preserve coincident lines 
which were previously eliminated by the Revit export, in which case the post-processing might uh, suffer from the lack of certain closed polygon segments. Now the export options includes a new property to preserve these coincident lines. One of the most exciting and important areas for creating a complete and accurate building information model is the ability to perform analysis on the building before it's built, especially energy analysis. So we want to implement all possible functionality to enable an architect or designer to analyze the energy behavior of a building while it is being designed and planned. So within Revit we can show the energy analytical model, we can use conceptual massing and building elements together, and we can use this kind of functionality to provide real-time interactive feedback and access results from the Energy Plus engine running in the cloud, displaying the result of different design choices directly in the model in real time, making it very easy for non-professionals to understand the effects of specific de design changes in the building. All in all, we see the whole area of building information modeling moving to a new level where from an application we are expanding into a platform the desktop application is transformed into a client interacting more with web services on the cloud the local collaboration is transformed into socially shared global collaboration the design level of detail is expanding into construction and fabrication areas. The limited building information that we had in the past is growing up to a level which allows integrated simulation. And we are moving ahead from just capturing design intent to actually being able to explore design alternatives in real time, enabling behavioral modeling instead of just pure physical modeling. So thank you very much for your attention on this. I won't be able to take any Q&A in this recorded presentation. The notes include some past Q&A from previous interactions. And thank you very much for your interest. I wish you all the best of luck and fun and creativity and success making use of the Revit API. Bye-bye.